Hey guys and welcome back to another video where I react to your setups. Now as I said in the previous episode we had a lot of entries and I am very thankful for that. I'm going to try and get as many setups in this video as possible. There are a lot that I have no comments for, they're just great as they are. So I'll feature them like this one. There are also some that look great but sadly your photos have come through either very small or very pixelated so I couldn't really do a deep dive and really show them very well in this video. But if you want to know how to enter these kinds of videos, it's good to follow me on Instagram or Facebook as that's where I usually announce that I'm going to do these kind of videos. I was even thinking of kind of doing another one of those Agony Aunt kind of videos where you can message in your Leopard Gecko or Crested Gecko questions like why is my gecko constantly scratching at the door or why doesn't it like this particular food, uh, whatever it may be and if I can answer it based on my experience or any information I can find for you then I can answer it in that video. But anyway, let's crack on with the setups. Now we're gonna start off with a patron of this channel, Emmelyn. So she actually has this really cool Tumblr post all about the process of setting up her gecko's tank. So I will link this below if you wanna check it out. But this was the setup that the gecko came with. She then went on to design a new setup. Um, I think this little video is really cool. I wish I could draw like this. Uh, but basically it lays out the plans for the tank. And then, this is how it looked afterwards, which is really cool. She then added a deep heat projector, which was an instant hit, so that's always great to see. She then documented how the tank looked after a year, which, you know, that's the thing. You can set up a tank and oftentimes online you'll see these tanks that are freshly set up. All the plants are just looking fabulous. But what they don't always show is once the tank has cycled, there will be plants that die off, there are plants that thrive, and ultimately the landscape changes a lot. Which I think is actually really good for the gecko because it's more natural, it's more interesting. So I think it's good that um, Emmeline actually shows this as well. Um, so as I said, I will leave the link to the Tumblr post below. Now onto the setups you sent in, and this one's quite special. So this is from Dr. JT, and this one comes with a bit of a story. So when he was young, his parents let him get a gecko. They went into a pet shop, the sales assistant gave them advice, told them to get this kit, though the kit did turn out to be quite out of date. JT says, he spent a couple of years in this setup until I stumbled past one of your videos. I found out how wrong my setup was and saved up some money to make a decent temporary setup. He continues, after a year or so, I finally got enough money to get him a naturalistic 80 gallon terrarium, but not without your help. Along with answering some of my previous questions, I submitted my idea to one of your fixing your setups videos and made it in. And you know what? I actually do remember this one. He then says, finally, this is his current home. He's about to turn 10 years old and I'm so glad I found your channel. It sparked my passion for animal keeping and taught me the importance of thorough research. Although it's often uncomfortable to share neglectful setups, I believe it's important to teach people that changing is possible and ignorance is not the best option. Well, thank you so much to JT for sending this in. Your gecko has a fantastic, spacious setup and I am very thankful that I could be part of the journey. Like this is what drives me with my videos because I know I don't get the views. My channel, you know, I've been doing this for 10 years now. It's incredibly niche, but my goodness, when I see stories like this, it just fills me with so much joy. And I know JT, I know you said if I have any tips to let you know. Honestly, I think you've done a great job here. I guess the only logical next step, if you fancied it, was to just add a 3D background just so there's more climbing opportunity. But Overall, this is great and uh, thank you for sharing your story. So the next setup comes in a video format and this is from Summer. So Summer got her juvenile gecko from Leopard Geckos London. This is actually a breeder I've done an interview with in the past. She's very good, very ethical. Uh, Summer uses a dimming stat, a deep heat projector and a halogen. This is actually a combo I've really wanted to use with my own geckos to be honest. And she's just wondering why the halogen is kind of dim. It's not particularly bright. Um, and she's assuming it's probably something to do with the thermostat. Now, it is a 75 watt halogen. So to be quite brief, what you're probably experiencing is 
the halogens reach in the ideal temperature and then it's dimming because it doesn't need to be in like full power so if you did want that full power look which is actually probably better for the gecko because it's brighter there's more infrared a um then i would suggest swapping the 75 watt out for a 35 watt so that'll be on full power for longer but actually when you work out like the 75 watt might be on half power for the whole day the 35 watt is actually more energy efficient it's brighter for longer um and the gecko will probably benefit from it now talking of halogens i know mario asked what my thoughts were on halogens versus deep heat projectors i actually think the combination is probably the best overall um halogens can be great but they're only really to be used during the day because they produce visible light whereas the deep heat projector could really be used 24 7 if you wanted to because it doesn't disturb the day night cycle um so either or both totally fine with and also a side note amazing setup mario now back to summer for a second because she did also send in these photos of her marbled newts setup and this looks so cool i wish i could grow plants this well next we have a crested gecko setup from evan he has recently completed his build and i think it looks great like i really love this hide in the top that's kind of built into the background and i'm sure that pothos will soon take over and provide even more coverage i was kind of curious how big this tank was but then i saw this photo and if you zoom in you can see the little crested gecko so this must be a pretty hefty tank or a very small gecko. Um, the only thing I'd probably recommend is maybe a branch or just something lower down here so there's something else to do or something else to climb on. But overall, it looks very nice. We also got these awesome shots from Angie of her crested gecko setup. And I just had to show you this one because of this adorable photo of her gecko who loves to like curl up and fall asleep in the bird's nest fern. Like this is so cute. It's like a little nest in the corner up there. Next is just a quick shout out to Oliver. Now I know in my last video I featured a blue tongue skink setup. So this is actually Oliver's setup for a royal or ball python that he's getting soon. And you know, I don't know a ton about snakes, but I do know a lot of people keep ball pythons in disappointing, bare, boring setups, sometimes even just drawers. So it's actually lovely to see Oliver putting in the effort and making this actually interesting and bright and natural for his snake. I got this snake set up from Mallory. Now, unfortunately, the email didn't contain any text, so I don't know the tank size or whether a thermostat is used here. But I am slightly concerned that these two bobs aren't being controlled, um, so we don't actually know how hot they are. It looks like it could be something that comes in a kit. So in these kind of kits, you just get like a random UV bulb and a random heat bulb and nobody tells you that you're meant to use a thermostat and people just plug and play and uh, it's not always great. I also see there's a thermometer up there, but it looks like an analog one rather than a digital one with a probe that can take an accurate reading of the basking area. I would also recommend providing uh, a better hide under the what I assume is a UV in the heat lamp over here just so the gecko can warm up but it can also hide away so if you have a setup like this and you notice your gecko is avoiding that area it's probably because it's just too much so um more coverage a thermostat and a thermometer with a probe a digital one and uh, that should be good then we have this setup from Alfie and I think overall it looks really cool. Alfie did say he used to use a loose substrate but now uses a rock tile. He feels this is safer. So in my opinion, you know, it's totally up to you what you use and if you feel more comfortable with this, go for it that's great i will say non-natural substrates such as calcium sand are the real like risky avoid or cost kind of substrates it can cause real issues most natural loose substrates are safe and as long as you provide the correct temperatures hydration nutrition you know and so on you shouldn't have any problems and i think loose substrate can be great enrichment so my only little thing here is don't ditch the loose substrate altogether but i also respect that it, you want to make sure that your animal is safe and if this is what helps then go for it but yeah it's a really cool setup i figured now would be a great time to feature some of those setups that came through that look great um like whenever i do these videos i really hope nobody thinks that i am purposely ignoring them to put this into context i've gone through a bunch of setups for this video and i still have hundreds to go through which 
I really appreciate, and any time I put out a post saying I'm looking for setups, I start again, you know, and maybe I'll make two videos out of that lot. So in the future, feel free to still send in your setups and maybe I will get around to seeing them. It is just me who makes these videos, who does everything. So, you know, I'm a one woman show. Um, some of these setups did come with questions like Kathleena asked why her cleanup crew were disappearing all the time, the humidity's right, there's a rehydration station area. So to be honest, I have the same problem. Uh, we occasionally get Morio worm beetles that live with the geckos for a few months and then they just die. I know that Ecologic Gecko has a lot of success with cleanup crew. I think a lot of it comes from, you know, lots of different feeding opportunities and also deep substrate where it can keep moist deep down. But I will link his video below if you want more tips. But yeah, overall this video series has really transformed over time and I'm really happy to see that. Obviously, I'm still happy to look at tanks that might need quite a bit of improvement. I think everyone starts at different levels. I mean, I started when I was 13 and my tanks and my care has definitely transformed over the years. And although roast videos can be fine, like if you enter your set up because you want someone to go ham on your roast and fine. Um, but with this series for me, I prefer to be kind of kind and encouraging. And you know, you really just don't know who's behind the screen, how old they are, like what their education has been like, what their experience is like. You know, if I was 13 and I ended my setup in a video like this and someone was just mean, that might just make me not want to change it and just be like really stubborn and upset. So I do like to treat things with kindness and help, hopefully help you improve your setup and enjoy gecko keeping. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe. We are getting slightly closer to 300,000 subscribers, which is kind of crazy. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching guys and goodbye.